Welcome to Mini Conversations Live with Beata. I am Beata Severinrik, and today we will talk about forgiveness. Meaningful conversations bring meaningful people with meaningful stories. Today, my guest is Darla Ivan from Colorado, so my kind of neighbor. Oh, she moved, sorry. But yes, she used to live in Colorado. She's a friend and great coach, international speaker and author. Darla, so forgiveness is a very tender subject. Mm -hmm. Not everyone wants to speak about that. First of all, sorry, I forgot. Welcome. Thank you. And thank you for Hi. being here with us. My pleasure. So before I, we will go to your story, I would like to ask you, actually, we, we are going to your story. What was your first experience with forgiveness? How, what put you on that path? What put me on that path was it started in childhood. You know, I grew up on a, on a farm in Kansas, um, just a middle to lower income class family. And just, I thought it was a normal family situation. Anyway, life happens and, and I got to about middle school and things started happening in my life. There was abuse, um, physical, sexual, emotional, and I knew it wasn't right and it, and I was too scared and had too much shame to share with anyone. And I would ask myself, why me? Why is this happening to me? And, and I knew it was wrong and I, and I didn't know what to do. And I was scared. I was scared for my life, for my sister's lives, for my mother's life. I, I was just a scared girl. And so I did the best I could in that situation. And so I just went through life being, I wore a mask. I didn't want people to know who I really was or what was happening behind closed doors. And so I would use laughter. I would use whatever to make, you, you know, to make people like you and not be judged. Cause I knew living in a small town, farm town in Kansas, the word would get around and, and um, I, I didn't want that. And I was, and again, I was scared. So Moving forward, um, I was a 23-year-old um, new college graduate living in Colorado, pregnant with my first son. And I had this awakening. I'm falling in love with this baby in my belly. And I'm thinking, how can I do different? Because I'm aware of what happened in my childhood. And I didn't want that to happen to my child this baby, this life that's growing that I'm falling in love with. And I was scared. So I sought out counseling and I got real about me and what happened in my past and like, what could I do moving forward? So I didn't hurt this child. Like what if it was some genetic defect within me? And, and so I got help and that's when my transformation started. And Transformation is forgiveness for me and it's healing. It's healing my past so that I could have a future. And I really, I'm just, that's why I do the work I do now. I believe in a world where healing is possible. And so I worked through two years, every week for two years, I went through counseling and I shared my story, big, open, raw wounds. I relived it and it was hard. And what I found is that, um, I confronted my father and my mother and my siblings and we had conversations and then we closed that door again and we never had another conversation for another 20 some years. It was still this elephant in the room. I will, I will stop you here because we're gonna go there, but I, I want to, in the meantime, uh, confirm with our viewers, like we all, we all, uh, like who hasn't been hurt in life by someone else actions or words we all and for you it was even more it was traumatic abuse by someone very close to you so mm -hmm. I'm wondering because it's also one of my uh, viewers like someone who also joins me here often she asks it's question to you 
how to how to forgive person that supposed to her job was only to love you so it meaning parents or siblings mm -hmm. or you know the family member how to forgive someone whose whose job was just to love you mm. I think how to forgive that you have to first of all forgive yourself because you know you didn't deserve that and for me it, I was an innocent child and and I thought what did I do wrong and so I would question myself for a long time like maybe I deserved it maybe I was bad maybe whatever so go within and forgive yourself first and then I think I don't know if the I don't know if I know how to forgive. I just know that forgiveness. You, you for, tell me, just tell me from your own experience how you were able to do it because okay. it, it was okay. your family member. Yeah, I think I finally got to the point that I forgave my father because he didn't know. Like I think I came to the point where I realized he did the best he could with what he knew. And looking back now and having conversations now in my fifties and his seventies, he was a, a victim of abuse and he didn't know what he didn't know. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't make it right. And forgiveness is not giving them permission and making it okay to do whatever they did, whether you're in an abusive relationship, whether you have child abuse, whether whatever, you had a coworker sleep with your husband. I don't know, we all have forgiveness work to do. And I think it, for me, it's just um, looking at them as hurt people, hurt people, right? Beautiful. Yeah, hurt people, hurt people. And so maybe it's this level of awareness and having compassion and a softening and a healing. And it's this lifelong process of peeling back these layers. And for me, it's like spiritual hygiene. Like every day I brush my teeth, every day I wash my body. But forgiveness is like, washing my soul mm. like it's spiritual cleansing for me and it and for me it, it allowed me to take this pain of my past and use it as power or opportunity to maybe help other people and I think it's it's true unconditional love is what it is um, I, I love it and so the well, I, I also had to do, we, I, like you said, we all have to do the forgiveness work. Absolutely. And this is the process. It's not going to happen one night, one day in one hour. Sometimes, and for some reason, I, from my own experience, it takes, it takes a time, sometimes long time. But just to put this first step on is, is healing it's, it's where healing starts but my question to you is because you also mentioned in your book that it wasn't just father then you married a man who was also abusing you mm -hmm. so it kind of was reoccurring this in your life but you still when I see you what I see first your smile so you at some point you started to enjoying life and others and be open to relationships and what lives offer so my question is is forgiveness the same as forgetting no forgiveness is not forgetting i will never forget the pain of my childhood or being married to an abusive husband who who tormented me behind closed doors and i hid that too because I knew better as an adult woman, like, and I reattracted that same thing because I think I still wasn't healed within right. and it's another level of awareness, but no, it's not forgetting. And, and, you know, in my book, I talk about my mother, when I had this conversation as an adult woman, um, I, she's like, just forgive and forget. And I get where she's coming from. And for me, I wasn't able to forget. I can forgive. But what happened happened. And here's where I draw the line in the sand. Like, I don't have to relive that story every day. Like, I think it's, it's separating victimhood because so many people yeah. are victims of something in their life. We all are, but some people take that victimhood and they repeat that story over and over and they say, stay stuck there. So they never move forward into the life of their dreams and put that behind them. Is it forgetting? No, but it's taking that and not reliving the story again and again and again. So it's, 
I think this forgiveness is so hard because there is so much anger in us and the anger is blocking our ability to move forward. This is the victim state of mind that you were talking about. So what you, what you did with your anger? How were you able to say, yeah, I know that awareness was the first step for you. And then what? Like I have this anger and I want to forgive, but I can't because anger requires, like when we angry, we want justice. We want revenge. We want them to know how much we were hurt. And one, one lady, she said, until I see, until I know that he knows how much pain I was in, I can't forgive. And this is expectation that probably might never happen because people who hurt you might never realize that your, your pain or it's something that they are not even able to imagine. So Absolutely. how was it for you? How did you release the, the anger? Yeah. So I think for me, it was personal growth work. Like I started digging deeper because I wanted more and I knew life had more to offer. So I started this journey after I got out of college of like, I want to know more, like more life stuff, yeah. not just book stuff, life stuff. And so I think for me, getting out of my victim story of, and even for my ex-husband, I'm still, I still had to work on this just until recently, but you just named the words anger and con condemnation and hate and revenge and resentment. I call them the three R's, revenge, resentment, and regret. And once you can get past the three R's, those three words, only then can you open up to possibilities. Because I think when we're in victimhood, we're in a contractive state, nothing good can come in because we are like, oh, and I'm going to get them yeah. back and they're going to pay and they're going to know. <laughs> And right. that's not our job to do. Trust me, the universe can take care of that. When we can forgive for ourselves, forgiveness is for ourselves. It's not for the other person. I love it. So forgive for yourself and see the doors opening. The universe will let your dreams come through, and then abundance can come, and receiving can come, and you're in an expansive state of beingness instead of this contractive state. And that's what I love coaching people on too. It's like, oh, when once that happens life changes yes and from my own experience and my clients i also notice that we often use my gosh when i release this anger and i forgave myself for not being in control because we are not in control of other people there is more space i'm finding more peace and when we have more peace of mind and inner peace there is this space that attract better people better opportunities. And like also you said, it's the part of our story. So what story are you telling yourself? Is it the better story supporting you in moving forward? Or is it the story that keeps you angry and stuck? This is the question just for you. Uh, I uh, Before my next question, I want to say Glenn, Nancy, Nina, I hope I pronounce it well. Uh, Isabella Francisco Agnes, the, thank you for being here with us. I'm looking at my phone because I cannot see <laughs> um, comments on my, uh, on my Zoom. Uh, so everyone who is watching us, we are speaking about forgiveness with Darla Yvonne. She experienced uh, hard firsthand abuse and she was able to move forward and you look at her, how pretty, beautiful, and what the light energy comes from her. That's why I love her. She was able to overcome herself, basically, her own insecurities and heart to be here where she is today. And she's helping others with the same, like to, to move forward to more happy life. And my next question to you, my darling Darla, <laughs> <laughs> is um, how, oh, it's actually from Nancy. So I'm gonna ask that. Okay. It, it's also that I experienced that the heart, and you said that you have to forgive yourself, but she is in the spot where she's saying, how is it, why, why is it so hard to forgive everyone but ourselves? So we, mm -hmm. we put this hurtful feelings on us that I, I 
disagree with someone or I did something that I'm not proud of or maybe I don't like or I, I feel like I hurt someone else and then I cannot fear, forgive myself. Mm. How you were able to feel, forgive yourself even you were not the, yes, the abuser, like you were the victim, but you still, you said that you felt shame, you were uh, wearing a mask, so basically inside you were feeling kind of like you are doing the, the harm to yourself. Yeah, I think especially regarding forgiveness for my ex-husband who was abusive, he, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed that I chose into that relationship. I'm like, I should have known better. Like, and so I, I didn't love it. tell people that. So I think forgiveness for myself, it, it's huge. And I think that's the hardest forgiveness is forgiveness of ourselves. For me, Forgiving yourself is like a healing elixir. It's like, it, it takes us from anger and shame and embarrassment to love, to loving ourselves. Like, oh my gosh, I'm enough. And so what, I made a mistake. I have failed a lot in my life. And you know what? It's not failure. It's, it's feedback. Life has, I, I, okay, here's something I love to share. I wouldn't wish my life on anyone. The stuff I've gone through Yet I wouldn't change a thing because every little thing I've been through and that I failed at and I keep getting back up, it's all taught me a lesson. And those lessons are my greatest gifts in life. And when I look at it from that mindset and that eyes view that, oh, that was just a lesson. And it, that allows me to forgive myself even more. And it's moving from the anger to love. And even loving myself. And it took me a long time. I didn't love myself for a long time. I couldn't look in the mirror and say, I love that woman. I, I would look and see everything that was wrong. And that's, that's this personal growth work. And that's get a coach, get a mentor, find someone to work with, read the books, yeah. you know, and, and it's life changing. It's softening. It's healing. It's compassion. Absolutely. The compassion part is, is, crucial I think so if I can add here from my own experience with clients and my own life I know that when I was at the point when I couldn't forgive because it's a blame like I was blaming myself for stuff that I didn't know so I remember uh, I had a coach uh, he's a good friend now and he said Beata stop blaming yourself for something that that you didn't know better you just did your best with what you had mm -hmm. at this time. And since then, I always take it with me like, holy cow, that's true. If I would know what I know today, probably I would make different decision. But if yeah. maybe if I would have bigger support, I would, yeah, I have someone who would guide me, I would make a different decision. But then look where it took you in your life. And usually when I took, at this spot when I thought that I fail, I was like, oh my gosh, without these experiences and these decisions, I would not be here. Absolutely. I love that you say that, um, like separate the, the, my mentor, Mary Mar Morrissey is my, one of my coaches that I work with right now. And awesome. she, she says, this is, she's like, separate the being the person from the behavior. Yes. There aren't bad people. There's only bad behavior and they, they, people make bad choices. We all do. And when you're aware and, and look at it from that point of view, it, that's helpful. I think as well in this speaking about forgiveness, it takes that emotional charge off. Like yes. we repeat these, we repeat our stories in this victimhood and we keep our shoulders are hunched up. We can't even take a deep breath and we have all this charge on it. And it's like, Oh, my shoulders are down. I can breathe easier again. And that charge, I can say my ex-husband's name now. And it's like, oh, he's in another universe way far away. I don't have any charge on that anymore. Yes, you are detached from this meant, uh, victim story. You are yes. not his victim anymore. You are a victor of your own life right now. Yeah. And I love it about you. So basically, is uh, wh where are we going here? It's my... I almost last question mm -hmm. how how has being able to forgive impacted your life 
Oh my gosh, it's freeing. It has freed me up to a new level. Like, oh gosh, I can release the hidden pain and it's not all about my past. Like I, you know, they, you, you hear people talk about the rear view mirror is small for a reason. I don't look in that anymore. That's my past and it's over. It's gone. It's done. It is what it is. And I'm not discounting it, but so what now what? Like what's next? Look in that, your windshield of life. That's why it's so big. So you can look forward at what's coming up. And I think that helps a lot too. Like, don't look at that past anymore. That is over. And whether you're a new person getting out of prison that, that made one mistake and had to go to prison. I have a friend, a dear person in my life that's getting out of prison in a few weeks and made a, a bad choice and had to spend a few years in prison and beats themselves up every day because of that choice they made. And he says, I, I mentor, I do a little bit of prison ministry on the side um, and it's, it's that self-forgiveness. It's like, I can forgive the other people. I can forgive this, but how do I forgive myself and come back into society? And so I, I'm working on coaching that person now, like when you know better, you do better and you made a bad choice. Mm -hmm. And that's your past now. And the future is not written. And you are the author of your life. So what are you going to write in this next chapter? Like, I love it. Throw that book away. It's over. So, yeah. Yes. And I love that you use the math metaphor of writing in the new story, new chapter, because we often are rereading the same chapter of our life that happened mm -hmm. years, years ago. And we cannot move forward because we are stuck in the past. For some reason, and I noticed uh, with my uh, customers that especially ladies, it's very hard for them to leave the past in the past. They are mm -hmm. re relieving this, you know, this terrible experiences over and over because like we talk about, they are looking for justice. And the only justice you can give yourself is to living past in the past, like Darla said, and take what you have right now and build from there. Write your new story, new chapter, whatever you want. And uh, Darla, what is your favorite or your maybe it's your life mantra that you would like to leave our audience with? Mm. I say we all have forgiveness work to do, right? And I just want to create this movement of healing because I believe the world, there's a world where healing is possible. And I want to leave another last comment that we are 100% responsible for us. And so if you don't want to be repeating the same story 30 years from now, stop, stop. You're responsible for your life. I'm responsible for my life. And I can choose to heal or I can choose to stay in the, the pile of crap over here and, and keep marinating in it. And I don't like that anymore. It stinks over there. So I choose to walk into the goodness now and heal that. And so what, now what? Do what's next. Create, be responsible for you. Be responsible for you. I love it. Erin, thank you for being with us. Agnes, Francisco, Erin said, you are, bad, you are a bad ass. Of course we are and we are badass <laughs> yeah. um, spiritual again yes that's true Min, mina i hope again if i pronounce it well uh thank you for being here with us today darla uh, i love your work yes i do also believe in the world where forgiveness is possible not for others for me when i drop the baggage of this heavy you know uh responsibilities that were not mine I feel I free the space for something better for better energy and uh, yeah what is your next step what is your next chapter and sometimes you know I, I want to say this too like forgiveness isn't a one-time thing like okay I forgive and I'm done <laughs> because it comes back and it haunts you or something will trigger I'm speaking for me something will trigger me and I'm like, oh crap, I got to do it over again and again and again. It's a process and I practice it every day. And it's like this onion and I peel back this layer and I peel back yeah. this layer. And then it's like, okay, I'm good again. And then sometimes the stuff comes up and I got to peel back more layers, but that's life. That's life. 
So forgiveness is like, not exactly. And uh, like you just said, peeling the onions and it can be peeling the same story over and over. You might think sometimes that you are done, but then something is triggering you again. So go back and peel another onion. Uh, another layer of this onion and see what is left, what is still there to work. And from all what you said today and what I take away with me is forgiveness starts within. So you have to start with you and forgive yourself first for not being in charge, for not being, being uh, in control of what was happening. Maybe you were a child, Maybe you were a woman and you have kids and you are living with someone who is hurting you. You are not alone. Please reach out to any, anyone who, reach out to me, reach out to Darla. We will, if we cannot help, we will direct you to someone who can because if you are living in unhealthy environment with your kids, it's, it's just not gonna, it's not good future for them. I have another thought and I don't mean to keep dragging this on, but I, I just popped up in my heart and I just want to share it. It's like forgiveness also does not mean they have to change. Absolutely. Yeah. Because my ex-husband abused his new girlfriend after me and she contacted me and, and he's still doing what he's doing and I can still forgive him and go on and live my life. It doesn't mean they have to change. I have to change. I do. And when I change, my world changes. And that's forgiveness too. I love it. And it's, it's what I wanted to say is that change, forgiveness is a change which starts with you. And you can start this change. When you start it for you, you can influence others, you, your family members. And like you said, the abuser or someone who hurt you, they might never change. And you expecting it, it's, it's just, you hurting yourself more because you won't have ever power over who they are, but you have the power over who you are or who you want to become. So yes, this change of forgiveness starts with you. But the, I think the, the risk that the ladies, my ladies most of the time are afraid to, uh, to take is that the risk of being hurt again. And mm -hmm. it, it's not like that, don't you think so? Because when you are aware where you've been, you forgive yourself first, you know that you won't let this happen again, or you will see the red flags, you know, And if you much do, earlier. it's not failure, it's only a no. lesson. And when you know better, you do better. And we get to turn that bitterness into betterness. Like it comes full circle and yeah, so don't beat yourself up if you do go down that path again and get in another situation, like, every day just take that next step and take that next step and do better and, and finally you'll get to that point and life can be good again yeah i love it well now i'm really ending this conversation if there is anyone who would like to ask darla a question this is your time because or yes another question actually darla where or what is the easiest way to contact you to find you online or on? I am, I have a website. It's Darla Yvonne International. Dot, and then um, I also am on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, social media, um, Darla Yvonne or Darla Yvonne International. It's the best way to find me. And if you message me or, or friend me, I will accept your friend request and we can do private chats and Awesome, sounds great. So anyone who would you like to get to know Darla more or are, is interested in working with her, please contact her. Oh, well, you, they can also find you on Facebook, yes? Yes, it's yeah. The, where we all live right now. <laughs> so thank you very much, Darla, for being here thank with me, you. for sharing your wisdom and your private experiences. And yes, forgiveness is life. So please share forgiveness with people and especially with yourself. Thank you everyone for being here with us again. Uh, next conversations live next Tuesday at noon, every Tuesday. And if you have interesting topics that you would like me to bring on or uh, speakers that would like to see, please let me know and have a wonderful day. 
thank you for so much for being here with me. Thank you. Bye-bye.